Hi, my name is Morgan Vigil Hayes, and today I'll be presenting our work on integrating cultural relevance into a behavioral and health intervention for Native American youth. Before proceeding, I would like to note that this talk will contain some discussion of suicide and behavioral health challenges. One of the longstanding health inequities in the United States is the extent to which Native American youth experience behavioral health challenges, including higher rates of anxiety and depression, substance abuse, and suicidality. In a 2019 review of behavioral health data, the CDC found that Native youth, or people between the ages of 10 to 29, completed suicide at over twice the rate of their non-Native counterparts. Two of the main factors for these behavioral health inequities are rurality and lack of infrastructure. For native youth living in tribal communities, such as reservations or rancherias, rurality and lack of infrastructure can cause services to be located too far away to be readily available, uh, particularly during times of crisis. And the lack of high quality internet bandwidth connectivity can render synchronous telehealth um, services inaccessible. Moreover, studies have shown that even when behavioral health services are available, they're often perceived with a sense of stigma and shame, and they lack the sustaining impact that would be desired, um, since they can often be perceived as culturally irrelevant um, and particularly out of touch with the realities of historic trauma that many Native youth experience. Um, kind of further aggravating this challenge of cultural relevance is the fact that there's 573 federally recognized tribes, each with their own unique cultural identity and set of values. Um, and so designing behavioral health interventions to be culturally relevant um, for native people groups involves being able to be adaptable to the different cultural values that are represented by these different tribes. In an attempt to understand how to best support early intervention efforts for bolstering native resilience to behavioral health challenges, we partnered with a community advisory board comprised of Hopi and Navajo behavioral health professionals with experience working with native youth. Our team sought to investigate how an intervention implemented with mobile health might be designed to address some of the factors that have traditionally caused behavioral health interventions to be inaccessible or undesirable to Native youth. To this end, we seek to answer two research questions. First, how can we incorporate Native culture and values into behavioral and health interventions in a way that is culturally relevant and meaningful? And second, what elements of a behavioral and health intervention um, do various Native stakeholders perceive as being most critical to long-term engagement? So in order to address these um, research questions, we take a participatory design approach to develop a prototype M-Health intervention called Aurora. And to create this intervention, we initially held two design sessions with a community advisory board or CAB comprised of six Hopi and Navajo behavioral health professionals um, who had significant experience working with native youth, both um, in kind of tribal reservation contexts, as well as in urban um, non-tribal contexts. We then presented our beta version of this intervention to 10 Native youth participants between the ages of 10 to 18 years old in two focus groups. We recorded and transcribed each design session, feedback session, and focus group, and used a grounded theory approach to identify themes around designing for cultural relevance and um, efficacy of use. And one thing to note is that this research took place in Flagstaff, Arizona, um, which is adjacent to both Navajo Nation and the Hopi Reservation. Um, and so there's a lot of um, kind of movement of youth, particularly between these contexts of non-tribal Flagstaff and then kind of tribal, more tribal areas in Navajo and Hopi. And this is a factor that we wanted to consider when we were trying to understand designing for cultural relevance. So for our initial research questions, some of the themes that emerged um, from our CAB design sessions was a strong desire across both Hopi and Navajo um, experts 
to have a behavioral health focus that was centered on mindfulness, which both groups identified as being um, really central to developing resilience, um, as well as being a very culturally centered way to develop resilience. Um, Another kind of note from our cab was that it was really important to incorporate culturally relevant colors and symbols. Um, So to accommodate this in our design prototypes, we reached out to a local Hopi artist to have him um, commissioned him to design some images for our app um, that were used um, to kind of incorporate some of those colors and symbols. And one of the symbols that was particularly relevant, both for Hopi and Navajo um, was the butterfly. And this is a quote from a participant that just really kind of helps demonstrate why that butterfly imagery was important. And it's important to also note that not every animal or color um, symbol that was used was deemed appropriate or relevant by cab members from Hopi and Navajo. So something that might be appropriate for a Navajo user might not be culturally appropriate um, to have in an intervention for a Hopi user. So this was something that we kind of took note of as we um, created our initial prototype. Other important things that we noted were also kind of the importance of um, community orientation that was noted by our CAB members. So there was a strong desire that this intervention would have youth focus on their place and role in community as contributors to community um, rather than just be kind of individually focused, which many of them perceived most um, M-Health behavioral health apps to kind of be centered on. When we took our prototype to youth, some of the key findings that emerged had to do with a desire for an explicit explanation of cultural significance of images, as well as practices that were integrated as part of the intervention. Um, Youth also kind of desired to have a balance between cooperation and competition um, as part of the kind of social interactivity that took place through the intervention. So rather than just having things be focused on very pro-social cooperative models that were suggested by the adult CAP members, youth also really wanted to have um, an element of competition, even if it was team competition. Um, And they noted that that would be a way that would help them stay engaged. So this was kind of a um, a nod towards how um, a youth perspective might be quite different from an adult perspective. And then finally, youth noted that they would really like to have the ability to create content that could be integrated into the app over time um, and to be able to customize their experience with these creations, either their own creations or creations from um, you know, their peers. And so this kind of really points to some new opportunities for thinking about efficacy of these types of interventions um, and how they might and how practices of creativity and integrating creativity um, into the application experience might enhance um, sustainable use over time. Some of the key takeaways from our work have to do with um, just generally cultural responsive design for native populations. And a major question that emerged for us was kind of figuring out the threshold um, at which culturally relevant design for a heterogeneous group of people might become too general to be relevant. And this has to do with balancing concepts of um, you know, tribal identity as well as identity that changes between um, tribal kind of tribal contexts and Western contexts that people tend to migrate between pretty frequently. We also identified the importance of including youth in design. Um, Specifically, we noted that it was very surprising that youth wanted to have explicit didactic elements um, that could be part of their app experience, as well as the importance of blending practices from Western and indigenous cultures to support um, youth's intersectionality um, in their experiences. 
Um, future work, which is kind of current work at this point, is working with the Hopi community um, to integrate this prototype intervention into a larger socio-technical support system for behavioral health. And I would like to acknowledge the indigenous people of the lands where this research took place in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'd also like to acknowledge our sponsors at NSF and NIH, as well as all of our project advisors um, that really helped kind of guide and shape our approach to um, designing this prototype. And if you have any questions, you can contact me via email or learn more about our project at these two websites. Thank you.